Meanwhile, the race for the presidency of the 10th Senate is still heating up and there have been series of lobbying and also power tussle. Only time will tell who occupies the seat eventually. Also, the recently conducted governorship supplementary election in Adamawa State has left a sour taste on the lips of many. While INEC has suspended the state resident electoral commissioner, the People's Democratic Party has given the commission 72 hours to announce the result of the Saturday election. Ede Dafinone is the senator-elect from Delta Central, and he joins us now to discuss Senate presidency and his legislative agenda, including his thoughts on the Adamawa state governorship election drama. Good to have you on the show, Mr. Dafinone. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's begin with you before we talk about other matters. Can you tell us about, you know, your legislative agenda based on your victory at the um, senatorial elections? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my background is principally as an accountant. Uh, my training, my years of experience is largely in accounting and uh, I'm today the deputy managing partner of the family chartered accounting business. But aside from that, I wear uh, several different hats, some of which I've had to let go recently as I ran for the Senate. And it's against the backdrop of this varied experience that I will set my legislative agenda. So to, just to give a, a little bit of background to my experiences, I run a plantation and rubber factory in Sapla and Delta State, and uh, that factory exports rubber to Europe and to the Far East. As an exporter, I've been the chairman of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria Export Promotion Group for the past five years. I resigned in October uh, last year uh, when my term was up, but uh, a significant amount of experience has been garnered in the export sector and in lobbying government at various levels for better benefits for exporters. So as a manufacturer, farmer and exporter, I, I bring that to the table as one of my agendas for my term in the Senate. But aside and away from that, I've also been the chairman, and, and still am actually, the chairman of the Nigerian Conservation Foundation for the last seven years. The NCF is the largest environmental NGO in the country. I've been on that board for over 30 years, and so uh, I'm considered uh, a little bit of an environmentalist as well. Um, significantly, those are the two principal agendas I would firstly bring to the table. But in the background also, I've also run empowerment programs in Delta State, uh, particularly and especially in Saple local government for the last 17 years, uh, training people at a skill acquisition center in hairdressing, catering and tailoring, and quite a few other disciplines, but principally that, and have empowered over 2,000 people in the last 17 odd years. So youth and women empowerment would also come in as a principal agenda as well. Thank you. Okay, so, um, you know, looking at your legislative agenda and just the, you know, the, the anticipation of the, the Tenth National Assembly, uh, this conversation about who emerges as, you know, the leader of the, of the Senate and the House of Representatives, while not hearing much about, you know, the issue of competency and capacity, it's looking like the focus is limited to zoning and religion and where the person is coming from. Uh, is it not a bit worrisome that we're not focused on the capacity building of lawmakers? Well, I, I think uh, the reason you're not hearing about capacity at this stage is because the first stage would be the appropriate zoning. So it is only when the party, the APC, has uh, zoned 
the leadership that you would then hear about the capacity of the different people aspiring to, to lead the National Assembly. So uh, the first step is zoning and we are yet as a party to finalize the zoning and uh, I'm sure once that is done uh, more people will throw their hat in the ring, some may even step back from the ring and uh, you would then hear about the qualities and experiences of the different people. Thank you, Mr. Daphne Now We know the Arawa group is backing <coughs> um, Akpabio's bid, and we also understand that um, an Igbo youth group is backing Oji Uzokalu. And I'm just wondering who you might be interested in seeing become um, Senate president. Well, there, there are quite a, a few very qualified candidates who have thrown their hats in the ring so far. But for me, it's still very early days. Uh, there, there is not much point in supporting a particular candidate at this stage until the party has finalized zoning. So if I am to, to stand with a particular candidate at this stage and the uh, Senate leadership is zoned to a zone he does not come from, then you know, it, it becomes a, a, a moot point as to his uh, candidacy. But I'm just curious, do you have a preferred candidate, um, you know, depending on the zone, whether one in the south and one in the north, or it's specific and you will not let that out until you're sure where this is going to be zoned to? Well, I'm, I'm a party man. I emerged as a senator uh, on, on the back of the All Progressives Congress. And so there must be some uh, element of party discipline that all party men, all senators must follow. And, and so we will wait, A, for guidance on the zoning and then B, uh, discuss amongst ourselves to look for the candidate who can best lead the Senate for the progress of Nigeria. Okay, I would like us to, you know, just very quickly move away to, uh, from, you know, the uh, National Assembly matters to what is currently going on now in Adamawa State. You know, the whole uh, country looks towards that state to kind of understand what's going on. As of this morning, we've heard that the... Um, a returning electoral commissioner has in fact been suspended because he failed to show up at the INEC headquarters in Abuja. But looking at a case where um, before the collation was complete, we have this officer going to announce results. Uh, a very testy time in, in, in Adamawa. What are your thoughts about what is currently going on? Well, uh, the Adamawa experience is... Uh a uh, large embarrassment to INEC and to the country. The elections of 2023 have been, in my opinion, the fairest and the most uh, uh, diligently executed elections since 1999. And, and, and so with all the improvements made in the system and the process, it is a terrible shame that uh, one, two, maybe a few more individuals have tried to usurp the process. Uh, I'm hoping that INEC can quickly straighten this out. The numbers do not lie. The BVAS system put in place by INEC is a credible system which also does not lie. So, so together with the voting slips and the uh, uh, ballot papers and the BVAS report, it should be quite simple to, to find the winner and to announce the correct winner of the elections that took place in Adamawa State. Thank you but for your, your point that you've made there, but how, how proud are you? You know, you, see, you did say you're a party man. When you look at the what has been exhibited by your um, party woman, and in this context, um, Aisha Binani, who is actually asking the Federal High Court in Abuja to stop INEC from voiding 
that illegal declaration that named her as governor-elect of the state, in spite of all the reactions that have trailed that illegal gesture, she is looking to push that and is probably um, not even paying attention or unbothered by what is going on based on this new update and the de demand she's making from the federal high court. Uh, one of the things the All Progressives Congress will push for uh, 2023 and beyond, or, or should I say continue to push for, is uh, to, to have the laws, to have the rules and regulations of every system to be upheld as much as possible. Uh, what has happened in Adamawa is... Uh, is an, like I said, an embarrassment to, to the whole country, not just to INEC. And uh, I, I wouldn't wish to comment on the, the details, but uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, the process has been usurped by individuals and it needs to be quickly straightened out before it calls to question uh, the, the larger electoral process. All right, then very quickly before you go, I just wanted to bring it back to, you know, the, um, the uh, leg legislative agenda. You know, you've already spoken about your vast experience as an accountant. How would you bring that experience into, you know, stopping, uh, you know, budget padding, which is something that, uh, you know, Nigerians have been grappling with for a long time? Well, uh, I, I think there needs to be greater transparency in the process. Uh, the, the, the way budgets are put together and the way they are reviewed. Uh, I think also the whistleblower blower policy together with the uh, freedom of information also allows for that greater transparency. Perhaps we need to take that to a further level to allow free access to larger amounts of information as to how budgets are put together and how expenditure is approved and, and, and recorded. Uh, there is noticeably uh, very little public budget review that goes on. And uh, as a professional accountant, I, I would observe that there is little or no point having a budget that is not reviewed afterwards for performance. So, I mean, that is the whole purpose of the budget, to set guidelines now. If you don't review the budget afterwards, how well did we do? Did we hit the targets? Did we fall short of the targets and why? And what corrective measures can be taken? Then the budget as a tool for, for growth and development is not really being harnessed to its full potential. Mr. Ide Dafinone, um, Senator-elect Delta Central, thank you so much for your time on Newsday. We appreciate your insight.